Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Wine. Welcome back to art class. This week is part one of our cubism drawing. This week, what we are working to do with cubism is we are working simply to fragment our paper before we start our drawing. Remember, if you're fragmenting, it means to break apart or divide. So we're gonna be taking our paper and dividing our paper in different ways, just as all these cubist artists did. Now, this week, you're definitely going to need a pencil. You are definitely going to need a ruler, and you might also need some templates or something to trace around. So it could be something like squares or rectangles or even something that's circular shaped like a cup. So let's get started. The first way that we are going to be fragmenting our paper this week is by using straight lines. So if I look at these two examples of artworks, I can see how the artist used many straight lines before they started drawing their artwork. So to fragment my artwork with straight lines means I'm going to need a ruler. And this is the, probably the easiest way to fragment your page because all I want to do is put my ruler down on my page and draw a few lines to break the paper apart into different sections. So I'm just drawing some long lines that go all the way from one side of the paper to the other. Now what I wanna be careful about is the more lines I draw, the smaller these shapes get. And I don't want those shapes to end up too small because then it makes it a little bit too tricky. So I need maybe four or five, possibly six lines, as long as I'm starting to get some different shapes on my paper, then I am good to go. So maybe I'm gonna add one more line. These shapes look a little bit big to me, so I'm gonna add just one more line. So that is the first way that I can fragment my paper just by using some straight lines. Another way that I could fragment my paper is similar to what these two artists did. And when I look at these two artists, I start to see lots of rectangular shapes and square shapes. And those shapes sort of overlap each other. So I could again certainly use a ruler if I were trying to make squares and rectangles because I can use my ruler if I line up the bottom of the ruler perfectly even with the paper, then I could use this to draw a big giant rectangle or a big giant square. So again, I'm gonna line up my paper and the bottom of the ruler so that I know that line is as straight as I can get it. I don't want it slanted. And then again, I can line my ruler up so that I know as it goes straight across. And there I have one rectangle that starts to break up my page. I can also use some templates here if I would like. I could pre-cut squares and rectangles or I could find paper that's already cut out in the shape of a square or a rectangle. And I could use those shapes to trace around. And again, it's important that I'm using this to break up my paper. So maybe I wanna come up here. I could just add another line that goes all the way across make this one a little skinnier. 
Notice I'm lining up the edge of my rectangle with the edge of my paper. There's a long rectangle that goes all the way across. I could do another square shape. I'm going back to a template. And again, it's okay that I overlap some of these shapes, but I just want to be careful that I don't create any overlap shapes that are too teeny tiny. And maybe I will add one more rectangle shape. I could even use part of my template to trace. Maybe I'll go like this. I can sort of cheat with the template. I could use it to trace part of the shape, but maybe I don't want the shape to be quite that big. And then I could line it up here and here and trace the other part of that shape. So again, the idea is just to break up my paper with a few shapes. So now I have one, two, three, four, five rectangles. Maybe I could do another one, but that looks pretty good for me with the squares and rectangles. My last choice is to use geometric shapes. Now I will tell you, I think this is the trickiest one because it's a little harder to balance all the shapes. Here you notice you see triangles. It looks like part of a rectangle and an oval. This one has part of a triangle, a little section of a circle, as well as some other organic shapes, but I wanna keep my life pretty simple. So I'm gonna use just geometric shapes. Now again, I could certainly use those templates that I've already used. So maybe I start a rectangle as a geometric shape. Remember geometric shapes are all those shapes that I can name. I could add a big triangle using just my ruler. So I could take my triangle and a triangle is three sides, so there's one, I'll make a great big triangle. Here's two, and if I connect those two lines, that'll be three. So I can keep going I could find something circular that I could use to trace. Maybe I'll come over here and I'll add a circle. Circles are really tricky, so I recommend if you're gonna do geometric shapes that you try to find something to trace around to get that shape as close to perfect as you can. And again, wherever it is I notice that I have really large areas, that's where I know I'm gonna to wanna to come in and add a different shape. I like to have all of my shapes overlapping or touching where I can. Maybe I could add, don't want those shapes to get too small. Maybe I'll add a square here. Those shapes are a little tight, a little close together in there. And maybe I'll just finish with one more extra triangle. Let's see. I could go like this. And like this, maybe I'll just do two sides, one, two, and that can be my third. So again, it's that idea of breaking this paper apart into different areas with my geometric shapes. So those are your three choices this week. You can choose the geometric shapes or you can choose the rectangles and squares or you could choose the straight lines. You do not have to do all three, just pick one. Draw it in pencil first, then when you're finished, your last step is to take a Sharpie marker 
and whichever design you're using, you wanna trace that with Sharpie. I like to put something under my paper when I'm tracing with Sharpie in case the lines bleed through. I want you to have a wonderful week. As always, if you want me to give you feedback before you trace in Sharpie, you can send me a picture of what your artwork looks like when it's in pencil. That way, if you need to make any adjustments, you can. If you think it's a little hard to trace those lines perfectly, you could always go back. This line got a little wiggly, so it might be a good idea to go back, use my ruler to trace. And you want to save this paper so that we have it next week when we're ready to start adding our Cubist artwork. I hope you have a wonderful week. Fragment that paper by dividing it up into different sections. And until next week, keep on creating.